Hello everybody, this is Chuck Wigger. We're at the State Capitol and I really love being able to meet with constituents that come to the Capitol and tell us about their concerns, the important things that they want us to be aware of, maybe make changes in the law to improve our great communities and our great state. And today we have the Minnesotans for Healthy Kids Coalition and have a few uh, constituents in North St. Paul, Maple at Oakdale to talk about coalition goals. And we're gonna uh, have, we'll start with Clara and we'll have each of you say who you are and a, a little bit and then we'll have a discussion. So, Clara. Uh, my name is Clara Krenz. I'm from Oakdale, Minnesota. I went to North St. Paul High School and I'm a current community health major at St. Cloud State. Great, welcome, Clara. Thanks. And I'm Denise Raverty. I'm a dietitian and I'm um, part of the Minnesota Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. And I have uh, a family of four. I have four children. The oldest has graduated from North High School, a sophomore at North, and then um, two younger kids. And where'd you graduate high school? I graduated from Johnson. Oh, well, no, that's good. A lot of Johnsons, <laughs> yeah. uh, Govies have yeah. made it over to North St. Paul and, and vice versa. So. Right. But great to have you. Thank you. And I'm Khadija Daoud, uh, and I live in Maplewood. I have two kids going to Maramitai High School, and one that graduated from North. Um, and um, uh, I, my background is public health, uh, so I, I'm very close to these issues that we are going to be talking about today. Great. And the others shared where they went to school, high school. I actually uh, are originally from Bangladesh. Uh, so I went to school in Bangladesh and Pakistan, but I did yes. my university education in the U.S. I, from, I have my master's from Harvard. From Harvard. Well, yeah, Harvard School congratulations. <laughs> okay, so we have a great representation from the district talking about Healthy Kids Coalition. Who'd like to start uh, saying why it's important to address your agenda? Uh, maybe highlight uh, some of the key points. Okay. Um, as I mentioned, I've been a dietitian for about 20 years, and I'm also a daughter and a mother. And um, what I care about kids and the elderly, and um, we're here as part of the Minnesota Healthy Kids Coalition to make sure that both kids and the elderly get access to healthy and affordable foods. Um, you are what you eat. That's right, exactly. I always remember that. Uh, didn't always... <laughs> practice that, uh, but you know, I, I know that has a great influence on how you're going to thrive as a healthy person, uh, what you put into yourself. Most certainly, and where we live in Oakdale, North St. Paul, and Maplewood, we're so lucky. We have so much access to good foods and you know the Gateway Trail, so many opportunities to get yes. exercise that we're, we're blessed, but um, this is for the whole state of Minnesota. So. Okay, so we'd like to go next on you know, uh, you know, the theme of eating healthy, having access to healthy foods. We do have a number of uh, places where we can go, and maybe we'll talk too about some of the price differentials, but the long term. But uh, Clara, some of the specific things that uh, we, we need to do. Um, I would say just um, getting the healthier foods just to be lower in price, just because that's a huge issue with being able to afford the foods, um, just like if something's a dollar versus six dollars, someone's gonna be more apt to buy the dollar item just because it's more convenient and more affordable. Just as a college student myself, I know money is really tight because we are in school, we're paying for school, and just like people who don't have a lot of money, it's just really hard to afford healthy foods that you need in order to live a, <clears throat> live a he healthy yeah. lifestyle. So I guess that, that's kind of more, most important to me. So. <laughs> Yes, Can go I ahead. Yes, it? please. So the high disparities uh, uh, population act goes to food shelves, for example, and mm -hmm. the food there is uh, not so good. I mean, the, there is very little fresh produce there. So I, I think know they're trying their best, but there there could be more, especially right. for those people that that's could right. be more and at so, risk. So these uh, programs, both the uh, Good Food Access Program and SHIP, the Statewide Health Improvement Program. Yeah, are, the SHIP program, Statewide Health, Health Improvement. Improvement Program, is are focusing on improving that access through food yeah. shelves, through um, uh, you know uh, uh, garden cleaning. We call a program is called garden cleaning. It's taking food from different um, gardens and then cleaning that and putting it into food shelves so that 
the, the people who need it most have a better access to fruits and vegetables. And some of these right here in the metro, I believe there's a, a great one in, in Frogtown, uh, one of these gardens. Uh, but uh, you know, what we're doing is encouraging the community to, you know, for community gardens and then sharing that, making it available, healthy foods and other outlets. Yes. And, uh, and then if we do that, people will be more healthy, healthcare costs go down, it's, it's a win-win situation. That's right, yeah. So, yeah. what are you asking the legislature to do? Because it's hard to disagree with that. I mean, we, we need to do that, but uh, it probably is gonna cost more money mm -hmm. to do that because it's cheaper, as you said, Clara, to buy cheaper food. It's mm -hmm. not as healthy. Mm -hmm. So, are you looking at some subsidy or what? Well, how do we encourage people to do this, especially if they may not have as much money, particularly as, as a college student, uh, it's very tight. So are we looking at uh, some incentives in supplying this or what, what is it that the legislature can do about this to encourage more uh, healthy uh, organic type food? Or any, anyone that? Well, you can um, help us by supporting uh, the ship to maintain that $35, min $35 million yes. by annual. Um, budget, and then also the good good food access program at ten million dollars per year. Okay. Yes, and so that is in, you know, it's a part of the state budget, and you know these programs that you refer to, and we won't have a final resolution on that. I mean, there, there's provisions, House and Senate have passed budget bills, and then you know these will be conferenced. Uh, as a part of our overall 46 billion or so ultimate budget for the biennium, that's you know for the state of Minnesota. But various programs, whether it's in education and health, and human services, higher education, etc., these are all different priorities that will be discussed, and uh, we would you know hopefully uh, maintain the importance of healthy eating is a great way to contain health care costs yeah. uh, because we certainly have put a lot of money, hundreds of millions, into helping pay for uh, health insurance for people that have a difficult time getting it and sometimes it's because of their uh, previous condition that could have been complicated more you know, just because of not having a, a healthy lifestyle earlier. Not always the case but Anything we can do early on for prevention, I believe, is a, a great investment that'll save us dollars later. So it's something that uh, I'll support as part of that uh, coalition. And uh, again, it'll be the priorities that uh, the leaders of the different conference committees and the governor will negotiate. And then throughout the state, you know, parts of your coalition, the Minnesotans, you know, talking to their legislators about that as well. So healthy so foods. You mentioned um, the cost of treatment, and this these um, programs also go for part of the um, not just prevention but also support. And Khadija can talk about some of her um, experiences professionally. Yes. You wanna? Yeah. So we, yeah, you know, the environments we create through ship also affects the disabled population. So there is yes. there is work that's being done in IDD homes. You know, the in, uh, where uh, individuals with uh, dis, uh, dis, uh, disabled individuals Disabilities, live. Yeah, yes. So, and and also. Um, and these are you know people that live in our communities. Uh, North Saint Paul, Maple Oakdale. That's not far off. It's a, no. it's a part of our community. That's right. And also the SPMI populations are seriously mentally ill populations. We are yeah. working with them. These are neglected populations. For them, uh, previously smoking was. Okay, I mean, they would say, okay, let, let them smoke because, you know, they're mentally ill. But that's not right because they are actually having the highest rates of chronic diseases, yes. much higher than the general population. So now what we are doing using some of this ship funding is providing the, pro, uh, the providers some information about how they can educate their clients about yes. these things and provide environments where they can stop smoking, where they can eat healthier, where they can be more active, and that will hopefully reduce chronic diseases in yes. this population. And I think that's great work that's being done through the statewide health improvement program. And uh, I would hope that, you know, that, that could continue. So it's, it's all about 
prevention, education, making uh, healthy options available. And as we alluded to, it's very expensive if you ignore healthy habits. And, uh, and then ultimately, it's not only yourself whose life uh, could be affected and others, but uh, society pays for that. Yeah. And it can be very expensive in uh, chronic diseases. And if you do not have coverage, uh, you know, we aren't going to just throw people away. People, you know, I will still get treatment, but uh, unfortunately, uh, that is going to add to the additional health care costs that we have, and that is a significant challenge that we're faced with right now. Mm -hmm. It used to be that uh, the highest amount, and it still is by a bit, the highest amount in our state budget is investing in students or future, uh, but uh, some of the various programs needed in health and human services now, particularly for uh, just, you know, taking care of people, is getting much more expensive and will be more of a needed investment because we haven't done quite enough on prevention, early intervention. So uh, it's in the taxpayer's best interest as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, and, you know, Clara, I wanted to ask you, uh, you talked about healthy eating. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're not too long ago, you were at North High and uh, you know, in, in, you're growing up obviously, mm -hmm. but uh, how, how does this sell with your colleagues? Yeah, you know, with people in your generation? Um, just, I guess it has to do with the food provided during lunches, just the options that we had. Um, when I was a freshman and sophomore, they didn't really implement grabbing fruit and grabbing vegetables or stuff that they had wasn't very like appealing. It didn't look like a good apple or they just didn't have that many options and they didn't promote the healthy eating that you should be, you should be yes. doing. Um, but then my junior and senior year, they kind of um, started implementing like, okay, like you should be eating this and you should be having this. So kind of just like we need more education on what you're putting into your body it is really important and that cookies and ice cream and all that stuff is not going to benefit your health and that it could cause more health problems down the road. So okay. just kind of the options uh, that we're Is given. it a matter of abstaining or is it just you know do it in moderation because you know most people probably like a cookie mm -hmm. yeah um, I do yeah do you? oh for sure yes uh, but then how do you do it you know it's you know within reason um well one of the big things was um we had an a la carte that was just filled with things that not good for you and that kids would not even get a lunch they would just go to that like ice yeah. cream and stuff like that and there weren't enough options to yeah. either choose from the cookie or this there was all just cookies and stuff yeah. like that so i guess implementing it on doing more education so they're they can make those de decisions wiser and okay. just giving more options i guess so. and i'd like to ask both of you yeah. as mothers how has this worked uh, because you know the Kids are often, they're going to reflect uh, the values that the parents mm -hmm. had on healthy eating. And is it working at home? So it's a struggle because uh, at home, you know, being a public health uh, professional, I'm always pushing for healthier options, but they have all these other options in school. Mm -hmm. And so I think through the statewide health improvement program, there, there is an effort to have children taste other vegetables. Yeah. So there's a lot of taste testing going on and, you know, you, they have to eat it like 13, 14 times, uh, yes. as says, before they like it. But that's what's... Good point. Yeah. So, and you can <laughs> yeah. make it... Uh, yes. So, so they're making it more accessible and encouraging the students to eat more, more of those vegetables so that they get, uh, get to like it and then that will hopefully change the culture. It'll take time. It takes mm -hmm. time because they have to eat it those 14 times. <laughs> but, yes. but, it will, but eventually, we believe, I believe that that will help. And as a mother, I would definitely appreciate that because it's always a struggle at home. When they come, they want those. And I'm always putting the healthier options on the table, but they want to eat out <laughs> and yeah. not, not eat as healthy. Yeah. Yeah, Denise, you, I, you, you yeah. had four, I believe. Yeah, so how's that I think um, kids are smart. If you can um, involve them in growing it, growing yes. their own food, they and it tastes better. It, you know, it, it's one of those things. My kids like the fresh fruit. They like the vegetables. That's expensive, yep. though. It's expensive yep. to 
provide that. So the more we can do to say how important it is that there's future benefits and it tastes good, they're smart. They, they get it. Great. Well, I strongly support uh, the agenda that you have Thank for you. The, the, the program, the state program for the health improvement and uh, you know getting right to you know the healthy eating and uh, you know it starts so what what parents are going to do at home and the role modeling but then in our schools and where public money is used encouraging this as well uh, we don't want to send a, a mixed message uh, and reminding everyone it's in each of their best interests and uh, as a person and as a taxpayer as well so let's uh, hope to continue making progress. And uh, any other items uh, that you'd like to share with us on your agenda? Um, we have this apple for you. Oh, well, <laughs> so you can okay. start with that. <laughs> Good. Uh, the Minnesotans for Healthy Kids Coalition, and I'll mention that includes the American Heart Association, the Stroke Association, Public Health Association. Um, MAND is the Minnesota Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, which would be a part of your organization and uh, it, one great group. And you 